Hey folks, my name is Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Now, I'm going to read to you our collect of the day today and talk a little bit about it. Um, as of Saturday night, I had a complete talk planned. Sunday morning came along. And on Sunday morning, in lieu of a, of a sermon, we had a guest speaker who shared with us, I think she shared with us a little bit of God's Word. She is our local MLA, uh, Member of Legislative Assembly, Member of the Legislative Assembly for our riding here in Nova Scotia. Now, it wasn't a political talk. As a matter of fact, she didn't talk. I don't even think she made mention of which pol political party she belongs to. She was here to talk about her story and the story of her family and the story of her community. And it was really amazing. But it completely changed exactly what I wanted to say to you. So today, I'm going to read you the collect. And I'm going to tell you what she inspired me with. Let's pray. Living God, in Christ, you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, before I get into how she inspired me, I want to talk just a little bit about what this collect, what this prayer is asking for. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your glory. Okay, we get the idea, make known your glory by transforming our lives, by renewing our lives, by, giving, by bringing us back to life. Make known your glory. Let the world see you in me. Let them see you in action through my actions and hear your words through my words. That's easy enough. By the riches of your grace, of course. Transform me by the riches of your grace, by the riches, by the enormity of your unending love of your infinite, deep, profound love, freely given love. But this first part, transform the poverty of our nature, this is, can sometimes be a little bit sticky. See, we don't like thinking of ourselves as broken. We don't like thinking about ourselves as, as inadequate or insufficient, so don't. That's not necessarily what it's talking about. The poverty of our nature. We, human beings, are created to live in community. We are created, our very nature is to be in groups, to look after each other in those groups. But oftentimes, we are not able to do it. We're not able to do that perfectly. Now, God created us to live in community perfectly. He created us to love perfectly. He created us to be mercifully merciful. He created us to be, to be compassionate. He created us to be forgiving. All these things we are capable of. And, and sadly, if you're anything like me, you fall short. This is the poverty that this prayer is talking about, the poverty of our nature, the gap between who I am and who I was created to be. Now, when our MLA came to speak to us, her name's Susie, when she came to speak to us, she talked about a little community called Africville. Now, Africville is a community that I only found out about about 15 years ago, if that. It was a community of African Nova Scotians, people of African descent here in Halifax. It was a tiny little, it was a small corner on the peninsula. And over the years, the powers that be whittled this community down and down and down until finally they literally erased it from the map with development. Need to put a prison in. Well, let's put it in Africville. Need to put a center for a hospital for infectious disease. Let's put it in Africville. We need to put the we need a new city dump. Let's put it in Africville. We need to build a new bridge over to Dartmouth. Let's put it in Africville. 
need to bring the, need to bring the rail line through. Let's have it go through Africville. Over the years, the powers that be destroyed it piece by piece by piece. This was only a part of what she told us, but it was in this part that inspired me to think about this prayer in this way. What she told us about was our history. She told us about our common history. She told us about the history of her community that was dismantled by my community. She told us this so that going forward into the future, we might not do it again. But for us to ensure that we don't do this kind of thing again, that nobody does this kind of thing to anybody again, what it requires us to do is accept the fact that for a century, we systematically ate up Africville. It requires us to acknowledge the fact that we did things we ought not to have done. We hurt people. We took from people. We, we foisted suffering and grief and despair onto people. See, if we don't accept, if we don't accept what we've done in Africville, if we don't accept what was done in Africville, if we don't accept how Africa, Africville was destroyed here in Halifax, then we are doomed to cause that kind of damage again to someone for some other reason. If we are not willing, as this prayer says, to look at the poverty of our nature, we are doomed to continue to live that way. Now this is, for me, this is one of the most basic Christian practices. Right? Wesley talked about this. Ignatius talked about this. This is one of the most basic Christian practices. Be willing to look in the mirror and to see who you are. To be able to look in the mirror, to be able to look, to be willing to look introspectively and ask yourself, today, did I follow God? Where today did I follow God? Where today did I step off the path? Why did I step off the path? How can I return to the path? Where did I make my mistakes? Where can I see the poverty of my nature in my behaviors, in my words, in my actions today? It's required of a Christian to do this because if we don't do this, we have no ability to grow. I mean, recognizing that there is a gap between what is and what could be is an essential requirement for us to grow physically, mentally, emotionally, and especially spiritually. I cannot grow closer to God if I don't recognize where my poverty lies, where that gap lies between who I am and who I could be. Now, right now, there's a bunch of folks out there who are really upset that we're going to teach this kind of history or that kind of history, that we're going to share this experience or that experience with our kids, that we're going to, that we're going to let people independently choose to take an elective course to learn about an aspect of history that may be foreign to them. Some of these people that are making these complaints would stand and say, yes, I confess that I have a belief, a faith in Jesus Christ. And yet they're terrified, terrified of hearing about how others have suffered. They're terrified of hearing the history of other people, believing that it will somehow diminish them, believing it will somehow diminish their story. Stopping. 
stopping the, the teaching of other people's stories, of other people's histories, stopping the teaching of, of how other cultures, other communities, other individuals have, have worked and strived, suffered, dreamed, built and have had stolen from them. If we're not willing to hear all the stories of the people around us, this incredible kaleidoscope of people around us, well, we won't ever be able to engage in that most basic of Christian practices. We won't ever be able to practice looking at ourselves, at our communities, at our world, at the systems and the, the governance that we live by, at our ideals, our theologies, our philosophies and principles that we live by to determine the poverty of our nature. Let's pray it again. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. I pray we would never be afraid of someone else's story. I pray we would always be willing to sit, to listen, and to learn that we would be willing and, and encouraged and, and courageous enough to allow the stories of others to, to offer us an insight into our opportunity to grow as people, as communities, as nations, and as a world. Amen. Nimultus.